We've been diving into ARM templates for the past couple of shows now. And on the next episode of DevOps Lab, Neil, he's going to dive in deep on linked and nested templates. Welcome to the DevOps Lab. Today we have a very special guest and my friend, Neil Peterson. And he's going to be showing us LinkedIn nested templates. So hey, Neil, how's it going? Hey, hey Abel, how's it going? Pretty good. Doing all right. So earlier you were telling me we're going to do LinkedIn nested templates. Can you tell our viewers what that is? Yeah, sure. So, you know, as we're building um, ARM deployments using ARM templates, uh, sometimes as these solutions get larger and more complex, uh, we may want to like break those down into smaller pieces, just like we would with like code, like you know modules, so that we can reuse them, uh, maybe even compose solutions out of different modules. Um, so what we're going to take a look at is a couple different ways we can do that. Uh, the first one being linked templates. Awesome. So conceptually, I kind of get what you're saying. We can do this for reusability. I really need to see this to really get what's going on. Sure. OK, cool. So um, I'm in VS Code right here. And for this first demo, we're going to kind of focus on this directory link templates. OK. Um, within this directory, notice that I have a directory named Artifacts. And I've got two individual ARM templates in here. The first one just deploys a managed identity. Um, so we can see in here, I've just got a couple parameters defined. Mm -hmm. And then a single resource that's a managed identity. Okay. The next template down, I've got a very similar template in terms of the complexity. Um, it just deploys a single resource. And in, in this case, it's a storage account. So I've got some parameters defined, a single resource, which is a storage account. And then in this one, I've got a little bit of extra stuff going on. I'm actually outputting the URI to that storage account. But in any regards, what we have here is two individual ARM templates. Um, that do one very small thing. They each deploy a single resource. Now, the point of linked templates is to be able to deploy multiple templates or use multiple templates as modules within a single template. So let's just assume that I now have a library of these. Um, and I want to create a deployment and kind of pick and choose from that library using a single template. And that's what we can do using linked templates. So I'm going to close these out and show you how we can build a template that would then consume those modules, if you will. Okay. So I've got another file here called Azure Deploy.json. This is going to be my main template or my parent template. And from within this template, I want to deploy the storage count and a managed identity. Um, so I'll just kind of walk through the template. I've got a couple parameters defined at the top, a uh, name, and location, and then I've got a couple variables defined. And what these variables hold is the location of the two templates that we just looked at. Now I've got these stored in GitHub, uh, but I could also store them in like an Azure storage blob and secure that with a SAS token. Uh, we can we can facilitate that within ARM. Okay. We're then going to get into the resources. So the first thing I want to point out here is the resource type. I've got a resource type here of Microsoft.resources deployments. And this is the resource type that I will use when I want to deploy an external or another template. Or this is basically like my linked template resource. And so within here, we can see under the properties of the deployment resource, I've got this template link property. And this is where I provide the location of the template, the link template I want to deploy. And you can see here I've got URI. I'm referencing a variable, which is link template, which is this first template right here, which is our storage account. Now, if we refer back to that storage account template, I've got two parameters defined in here, name and location. Back in my parent template, if you will, under template link, I've defined the template, but then below that, I then have a set of parameters. So I can take data from my parent template and pass it through to the linked template as parameter values. And so quite simply, doing this little piece right here 
in my parent template, I'm now referring to an external template that I want to deploy. And so you can see how we can start to like compose our deployments using link templates or modules, if you will. To that point, I now have a second resource here, and we can actually see this under my resources section of my ARM template outline. There's my storage resource. I've got a second one in which I want to deploy that managed identity. And kind of the same thing. I've got the template link. I'm specifying the link to the managed identity template, which I've got in this variable right here. Gotcha. OK. And then finally, I'm passing in some parameter values. One thing that I want to point out here, though, is notice that I've got a dependency on this resource. So kind of where I'm going with this example here is that I want to deploy the storage account first mm -hmm. and wait until that's completely deployed before I deploy the managed identity. Or I want to deploy one template before I deploy the other one. So just like we can with other types of resources in an ARM template, I can set up dependencies between my linked templates, if you will. Cool. Cool, cool. Oh, and the last thing to point out here is that in my storage account template, we're outputting the storage endpoint. Back on the parent template, I can kind of like plumb that value through and mm -hmm. output that at, from my parent template as well. So we can see I've got outputs. Um, I've named it storage URI. And for my value, I'm referencing the storage deployment. So that's this linked template or this deployment resource here dot outputs dot storage endpoint dot value ah okay that makes sense cool which if we were to come back into the the template that i'm actually deploying we can see outputs mm -hmm. storage endpoints dot value got it cool so that is just like a really quick very very simple example of where we might use link templates and again kind of the real big um the big deal here is being able to take a bunch of small templates mm -hmm. and compose solutions of, that, comp that are comprised of those templates using kind of just a single parent deployment, if you will. Cool. So like link templates can really help me in terms of like reusability and also just cleans up my deployment templates as well, huh? Absolutely. Cool, cool, cool. Got it. Cool. So that's link templates. And, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think link templates are probably more the more popular way to do this, but there are some other situations um, where we've got this other type of way to compose deployments called nested templates, uh, where it comes in handy. And let me show you one of those. Okay. So the big difference here between a link template and a nested template is a link template, the kind of the child template or the, the modularized templates that we're deploying are held in a separate file. Mm -hmm. The difference between linked and nested is that in a nested template, we're actually nesting that arm directly inside of the parent template. So mm. using kind of the nested template scenario, we're going to have a single template with multiple ARM templates nested within it. And there are some good reasons to do this. And I'm actually going to show you one right now. Okay. Um, so I'll walk through the template top to bottom and just kind of call some of these things out as we go. So I've got an ARM template. Um, one thing I want to point out here is that I'm deploying this template to the subscription scope. Um, so we can deploy ARM templates to multiple different scopes, subscription, tenant, resource group. Uh, but in this case, I've got a template I'm deploying to the subscription scope. And the types of things that I can deploy to a subscription are like resource groups, policy objects, and a couple other things. Um, I've got a couple parameters defined. So resource RG name for resource group name, location, and storage name. And then I've got my resources defined. And the scenario that we've got here is that I want to deploy a resource group, which is a subscription scoped resource type. So I want to deploy that to a subscription. And then within the same template, I want to deploy a storage account into that resource group. The problem there is that a storage account needs to be deployed at the resource group level or scope. So we've got kind of a little situation that we you know, need to get around there. And that's what nested templates in this situation are going to allow us to do. So deploying at the subscription scope, I've got my first resource, which is a resource group. Mm -hmm. I'm then going to deploy my second resource, which in this case, we've got the same resource type that we saw before, so a deployment resource. Mm -hmm. But instead of defining the location of a template somewhere 
you know, on an accessible endpoint, I'm actually going to embed the template within the deployment. So you can see here we've got template. And then if you look at this, it looks very similar to any ARM template. So we've got a schema, a content version, resources. I could have parameters and values in here or variables in here as well. I'm just not using them in this, in this example. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got a template embedded, but notice the other thing to point out here is that the embedded template is scoped to a resource group. So now within this nested template, I'm changing scopes and I can deploy my storage account. Oh, cool. And I can deploy it into the resource group that we created up here mm -hmm. by using this property right here. So on the deployment resource type, I've got mm -hmm. a property of resource group, which is going to specify whatever I'm deploying in here, deploy into this resource group. The other thing to point out is notice I've got a depends on declaration here. So I mm -hmm. want to make sure that my resource group is deployed before I deploy my storage account into that resource group. Got it. Very cool. So maybe you explained this, but I, I, I don't quite get this yet. A little bit below, you have this um, under your properties. You're scoping this to outer. What exactly yeah. does that mean? What does that do? Yeah, I'm glad you asked. So we've got a nested template here. Um, so this template is nested within the parent template. Mm -hmm. And what this scoping piece determines is at what level um, ARM template expressions are evaluated. Mm -hmm. So for instance, okay. notice in here that for location, mm -hmm. I'm selecting or I'm, I'm specifying parameters dot location. Mm -hmm. Now the template is e evaluating this expression as if it's outside of the nested template. So it's actually oh. grabbing the value here from the parameters defined in the parent template. To that point, notice if I change this to inner, click save, it now doesn't recognize um, either one of these parameters because they're defined outside of the template. So it can be a little tricky when you're putting this stuff together around scoping. So mm -hmm. things like parameters, variables, even um, expressions or functions like resource ID, you kind of have to watch the scope at which you're working. I was just going to ask about that because it, it makes sense that if I scope it to outer, um, th that makes sense to me that all my expressions are going to to scope it at, well, from the from the outer uh, from the outer template. So that that makes sense to me. Yeah. So, how would I do something like, let's say I'm deploying multiple things inside of my resource group, right? So right now we're just deploying like one thing, but what if I'm deploying, let's say, I don't know, uh, multiple things um, and one depends on the other. I can't, how am I supposed to get that resource ID? Because I think it's gonna be scoped to the wrong thing, right? Because it's gonna be in, in, the, in the template as opposed to on the outside template. Yeah, I think I, I understand what you're saying. Okay. So let's, actually, let's take a look at another example here. Um, okay. I've got the, the inner one and then I'll, then I'll address that question. Mm -hmm. So I've got an example here where we are scoped to inner. So mm -hmm. I've got a couple parameters defined outside of the nested template. Mm -hmm. um, and then I have one parameter, these are a little hard to see. Yeah, so where is my nested template? And I've got a couple parameters defined inside the nested template. So a couple things here. So because it's scoped to inner, inside of this nested template, mm -hmm. I only know about the parameters and variables that are defined inside that template. One of the things I can do when I'm scoped to inner mm -hmm. is I can bring parameters from the parent template inside so if we I'll walk through this, so here's my deployment resource. Um, I've got my dependency. Inside of my properties, here's my expression evaluation options. Mm -hmm. And then notice that I can then bring in parameters from the outside. So it's oh. a little hard to see, but I'm not, this is, I am not inside of my nested template here. This right. is the properties of the deployment resource. So I can specify parameters to bring in. So going back to your question, one option would be to actually scope to enter, mm -hmm. and then you can use those resource ID functions, mm -hmm. and then just pull in the parameters that you need to from the parent template. 
gotcha. if there is a need to scope to outer, um, rather than using the resource ID function, you can kind of just hard code or use like the concat function to um, basically specify the resource ID of the resources on which you need to create those dependencies. Um, but I think bottom line is it can get a little tricky when you're working with the two different scopes. So it's really just, you know, when you get in those situations, really just like focus on the scope, pick the one that makes the most sense, and then you've got a couple options for working through some of the, the intricacies there. Cool, cool, cool. Well, this actually cleared up some stuff for me because that the, the inner and outer scope thing was kind of making my head explode this weekend. So this is awesome. Thanks, man. Yeah, and I, I would just point out that we've got some great documentation that goes over uh, deployment scopes as well, and as well as the nested template scopes. Cool. I, well, I need to definitely read those then. Man, I am constantly amazed at the power of ARM templates and all of this linked and nested template stuff. It really makes things flexible. So I'm so glad you showed it to us. So viewers, if you want to learn more about ARM templates and nested and linked templates, check out the links below and join us next time on the DevOps Lab. Mm -hmm.